Hi guys, welcome back. So these fallow weeks are always a little bit of twiddling of thumbs waiting for the selections for the big games of the weekend. And we get the England and the French team out. Let's have a look at them. England versus France, a big step up for England. Sure, they've won two games against Italy and Wales, but this is going to be, yeah, a different step up, that is for sure. And there were plenty of reports in the week that Farrell was going to be dropped, but you never quite know with these rumours, these leaks. Sometimes they're not true, but this one certainly was. And Smith, Marcus Smith, starts at 10 with Owen Farrell on the bench. Ellis Genge is captain for the first time. Well, kind of, because if Farrell comes on and Genge is still on the pitch, it sounds like Farrell takes over the captaincy. So that's still a little bit strange. But anyway, Genge is captain. But anyway, hopefully if Genge is captain, maybe that means Borthwick keeps him on the pitch for a little bit longer instead of that early swap for Maka Vunipola, which I think isn't quite the same quality. And many people didn't think Borthwick was going to make this change, me included. And maybe Smith's stellar performance in the big game for Harlequins um, at Twickenham versus Exeter prompted him to make this change a bit more than maybe he would have before. I don't know. Let me know if you think that had a part to play. But certainly releasing him to play was being justified because of big performance for Harlequins. But can he translate that into England? And in my previous discussion videos, I've been really going over all the pros and cons and Smith and Farrell and Ford as well. And I concluded in my selection that I would have gone for Smith as well, because I think he just needs a go with Lawrence at 12 instead of the uh, Smith-Farrell combination 10-12. Let's see what he can do from the start. And just a shame to me that we don't see Henry Arundel in that starting back line as well, but at least he gets a more balanced back line to have a go with. But make no mistake, this is a huge game for Marcus Smith. If he can shine against a top team like France, against a physical team like France, he can definitely dislodge Farrell as the starting 10. If he has a poor game, it could definitely push him back down the pecking order behind Farrell and maybe even Ford now he's back available. So there's a lot riding on this guy's shoulders, 24 years old. You know, he's ready to explode if this is going to be his stage, if he's going to be good enough. So yeah, a lot of pressure on his shoulders, but he's going to have to play like there's no pressure on his shoulders. So that's tough to do, and I wish him well. There was another blow. Courtney Laws was injured earlier on, and we knew he wasn't going to play, and he's been one of England's best forwards for the past couple of years. But on a positive note for me, Good to see Dave Ribbons on the bench. I've said many times in previous videos he would be an excellent substitution coming on because I think he makes good impact around the pitch. He's good in the line-out, etc. as well, but he's got a great offloading game as well. Probably the best of all the second rows for England that I've seen. So anyway, let's have a look at the team as a whole. Freddie Stewart was always going to retain at 15, but I do think we need to see a backup to Freddie Stewart get that 15 shirt at some point. Maybe Aaron will come on and get 20 minutes at 15 could be interesting. Malins, who's done well so far, stays on the wing. We stick with Ollie Lawrence and Henry Slade. I thought Joe Marchant might have had a chance there, especially with Marcus Smith starting his club mate. But they're sticking with Lawrence and Slade, trying to get some continuity. As with Anthony Watson, hoping to see you know even a little bit more from Watson, really see him cut loose. I think he's ready now. He's fit and firing. I did wonder if Alex Mitchell was going to get a start at nine alongside Smith, but they've stayed with Van Portvliet. I just wonder if that's missing a trick. Mitchell needs a start. You need to see if he can do the job that Van Portvliet does at the start and can Van Portvliet make an impact. We'll see. But anyway, Mitchell doesn't get the start this time. Genj, as I said, starting as captain. George and Sinclair, the same front row, same second row, Satoji and Chesham. That was never really in doubt. In fact, the whole front five was never really in doubt, as was Ludlam and Willis. Don Brandt, though, is the player who I get most comments on saying, is he really up to this level? Well, this is a really good test. If he can mix it with the French team, the French pack, and he looks good physically, I think that may be answering some questions. So, yeah, a big game for Don Brandt. Talking about number eight, so, uh, soon as I mentioned Alfie Barbary was back playing for Wasp, that he got, not Wasp, I'm sorry, for Bath, that he got injured again. Poor lad, can't catch a break. Sam Simmons can't even get a look in. So, number eight wise, is Borthwick just waiting for Zach Mercer to return from France? That's interesting because we haven't seen a sniff of any other number eights. 
Then on the bench, as we see, very similar apart from the change of laws for ribbons. Curry beats off the unlucky Ben Earl once again, and Owen Farrell's on the bench. And please, please, can we see a decent amount of time for Henry Arundel? Now on to France, and again, not many changes, similar to England, just three from their win against Scotland. They've got problems at tight head. Howass was banned for his torpedo impression in the last game. Antonio was banned for his high tackle. And uh, Falatea must have been thinking, right, now it's my chance, because he was a leapfrog by Howass to get the starting spot. But no, Dorian Aldegheri comes in to start over him again. Sure, Falatea makes some good impact off the bench, but he's got to be feeling miffed, that's for sure. A bit of a blow, though, as you launch the hard man at blindside. He had a really nasty uh, knee injury. That looks bad for him, for his World Cup hopes. I hope he does make it, but it's not looking good. And the experienced Francois Cross comes in. So, you know, a decent replacement, but Jalonch has been the first choice blindside for a while now. So that doesn't help. But what does help is that the wrecking ball inside centre, their first choice inside centre, Jonathan Dante, is fit to start. And Moafana drops to the bench. He's a really good impact sub covering wing and centre. So yeah, the French team, as we know, very powerful up front. We've got uh, Willems there at five, a story saying that um, that Zach Mercer was winding him up, saying other guys are more athletic, but he's going to be a big handful. So you've got the, the lanky Flamont and the massive Willems. That's an interesting mix there. And the back line has been doing pretty well. Uh, Intermac maybe hasn't been firing completely as he has done before. Dupont's looked good. Demortier's looked good coming in on the wing. Now they've got Dante back it looks like a really powerful back unit, probably a slightly better back unit. The huge Tower Fifi Nua on the bench, a Makalu who can play anywhere, back row or even on the wing. What an athlete he is. It's going to be a great matchup, a fantastic test for England. The favourites, I would say, are probably France, even though they're away from home. Uh, England were going to have to step up and can Marcus Smith step up, run the game, look good, use those weapons around him, not over try, wait for those gaps and maybe, you know, sneak through a break, a half break. We hope so, because you certainly need some tens to step up for England, I think. So let me know what you think of the England team, the French team, how it's going to go. How would you have done the selection? And I'll catch you next time.